Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Aurora 4X. This is the last episode that I'm going to record before my next session because I'm going to be reading your comments over the weekend, so please do leave those comments and I'll leave, leave comments on this video and I will be recording again on Monday. So for right now, we're, we're continuing to scan down the solar system. We're going to try to get our construction rate up, finish getting things converted over. I'd like to finish that military academy because I do feel like we still have plenty of areas of our scientific uh, team that are kind of gapped, you know, we've got just gaps in the different types of people that we can use. The 45% bonus on construction and production is really good. Very happy to have that guy. The Geo Survey ship is moving around great. Very fast ship for what its purpose is. Usually, I, uh, the first time I played, I actually made like four Geo Survey ships that were much slower. And then they got through with the whole solar system pretty quick. I also gave them a hundred billion range, which was crazy. They ended up chasing asteroids everywhere. Uh, not asteroids, sorry, comets. And uh, that was bad, because they, they'd get like all the way out there, and they'd be like literally two years away. And they were like, okay, well, we got to come home now. Um, but I'm really liking this. Having this ship that's much, much faster, with a shorter range, even though it's a military vehicle, um, it seems like it's working really well. I'm, I'm happy about how it's doing. We can see here that its maintenance clock is at 1.35 years. And again, this ship had that... that uh, period of time that it could go for, you know, who knows how long, I forget now, like six years, somewhere around there. The crew's been out for 16 months, and the ship itself had a design specification of 60-month uh, deployment time, so they got plenty of time left to, to finish surveying the solar system. Let's go see how well they're doing overall. Um, they have surveyed 351 out of 620 identified system bodies. Pretty good, so they're about halfway done already, just one ship knocking it out. And how are we doing on research and industry? Okay, we're chunking through there. We are almost finished, 10th of September. Just a few short months away from getting a 20% bump to our overall construction rate. So this is going to go up a lot. Which will help facilitate getting the transfer of uh, conventional industry done. We identified more minerals. Oh yeah, lots of minerals all over the all over the solar system, and uh, it looks like our, our our comet has quite a bit of stuff on it. Corundium. A team on Earth has finished research at the construction rate, and we've now begun research on research rate 240 research points. All right, cool. Yep. Yeah, so bam, 4,334. What are we doing on fuel? 10 billion. Pretty good. We're still doing fine on fuel. Is that 10 billion? No, 10 million. Excuse me. All right, so I'm still still kind of hesitant like uh, to, ident to to build a new freighter because we still I'm not going to build any infrastructure until we have this stuff done. So let's just um, let's go 30 day chunks until you know until it's time until things get converted over. The game has paused for me for some reason. Not sure why. Something must have happened. Let's check the log. Um. Okay, we had a conditional order that got activated. The Geo Survey Task Group was given a conditional order to refuel at Earth. And so that's what paused the game. So basically, he got low on fuel. He had to come home. Geo Survey Task Group. Jeez, dude, how far away did you go? Oh, you were chasing it. You were chasing the Brooks Comet, weren't you? You had to have been. Oh, well, actually, no, hold on. Uh, it could be that there are. No, he's just, he was just out there. Well, he could have been out here, probably. I don't think he was chasing the comet. Let's go back to five-day chunks, because I want to see what the hell this guy's doing. He only has 19.4% of his maximum fuel. Yeah, well, it's because he went really far away, you silly goose. It's okay, he made it back to Earth. He's good. Bouncing around the solar system like mad. He's crazy. It has been a number of years, 10 years, since we started the, the, the map, so it might not be a bad idea to evaluate how Bernie Sanders is doing as the uh, governor of Earth, see if there's anyone who's any better. He probably has had a few promotions uh, since we appointed him, but there have also been you know, lots of graduates each year over the last 10 years, over 100 people. So we might have someone who's a little bit more better suited to giving us the bonuses that we need. So let's go check out civilian administrators, 
Governor of Earth needs to be A2 or higher. So yeah, Bernie's is, he's already all the way up at A6. He's got a 20% mining bonus. He's got a factory production bonus now. Population growth bonus is working well. Let's just see if uh, anyone has bonuses we really like. The mining bonus of 20%. That's what, we already have that. Uh, another mining bonus of 20%. Let's see, does anyone have like a construction bonus that's better? Looking for... I oh factory production bonus is what it's called. Kate Wright has a bonus of twenty percent. Might not be a bad idea, just because we uh, we're doing Kate Kate Cartwright was it? Yeah. She's actually exactly what I want. She's got the mining bonus and the factory production. So guess what? Sorry, Bernie, uh, you've been fired. You are now going to be replaced by Kate. Yes, I want to replace him. Um, so Bernie got ousted by, um, well, it's certainly not going to be a Clinton or a uh, a Bush or any kind of other per person that's going to come into charge. You know who it's going to be? It's going to be um, it's going to be Fred Westerhouse from Paradox Interactive, the CEO of Paradox Interactive. Uh, he he, uh, I think it's Westerhouse, right? I think that's the full last name. I'm, I, I know his name is Fred, but I always forget his last name. Or I think it is. But if it's if I, if I spelled it wrong or it's not quite right, then that's who I'm thinking of in my mind. You know, his quick rise to power over the last 10 years, it was, it was truly epic in, in story. Um, he went from leading Paradox to becoming like a major multi-billion dollar industry. Um, everyone in the whole world was playing their games. And then he decided to run for, for political office. Then he became the governor of Earth. I mean, everyone just said, yeah, dude, Fred's the man. So that, that's what happened. Bernie um, died. No, he didn't die, but I mean, he's like 80 now. If, if He's like 70, 77, 76 years old right now in real life. So he'd be like 80 in his 80s. Ugh, that'd be bad. Yeah, Fred Westerhouse, look at this. Factory production, mining, shipbuilding. Perfect. Awesome. Good stuff. So we are seven times our initial production of 1,000 per year. We're, we're getting up there. It's pretty good. And look at that. We only have four point one six mines to make and ten uh, commercial industry to convert to construction. We're almost done. That's awesome. I think we're going to want a couple more military academies. So let's add two to that order. And we are going to go and modify this guy to fifty percent first. Military academy. Oh right, it's currently paused. Uh, well, whatever. We need to, um, pause it. No, we need to move it down in the queue. And then we can modify it to 100%. No, 50%, because one of these is going to get done first. So as soon as the other one gets done, it'll start doing the military academy, and then we'll get a pop-up saying we got to do, do something with the rest of our industry. Go to five-day advances. Mm, okay, we had another conditional order, probably. Where are you? Are you are you chasing comments? Okay. Don't go so crazy. Okay. Second of March. Just a couple more weeks, we'll be done with our conversion of our conventional industry. Okay. And now we got to go back in and modify military academy to be using 100% because we really do need more people. How's research looking? We are. Only 290 research points away from having our research rate upgraded, which is great. Um, also, now that our industry is done, let's, uh, for the most part, done. Let's knock out the two, the 2.41 military academies, but then let's also knock out like 2,000 infrastructure. Each infrastructure costs two duranium, so this is only going to cost us, you know, 4,000 of our 10,000 duranium. We're going to use that infrastructure to go and set up some habitats on the moon, because obviously. This is like my real life, my actual real life belief. We are idiots for not being on the moon yet. Like, if an asteroid came, like, that could obliterate us, we're stupid, because we could totally have people living on the moon and save humanity. Like, this is silly that we, we haven't tried to advance the frontier of space. Like, why aren't we exploring? What happened to the explorers of our, of our species? You know, remember when we used to, like, put people on boats and just send them off into the ocean and hope they find something? Like, let's do that in space. It's time, man. We gotta get out there. That's that's uh, that's what Fred Westerhouse would say. 
Um, and that's why uh, we're going to do it. All right, we've finished the research rate upgrade. Cool. Um, we can actually see, like, researching stuff costs money. Um, we're spending 75.8 wealth on research. Um, we've been generating a lot of racial wealth. 117,000 racial wealth has been generated so far. Every tick of five days has been about 100. Um, wealth is made up of taxes on our, on our peoples. Um, and then we're spending it on building things. And, you know, wealth is important. Like, you do have to be careful. Like, it's useful and important and stuff. So, um, do we want to start working on the next engine, or do we want to take advantage of this crazy 45% research guy and do some more construction production? Getting our mining rate up would be sweet. I think so. Let's grab Zoa. Zoa Mia. Maybe we go rename that guy. So who else would be a good researcher? Um, let's stick with the Paradox theme for a little bit. This is going to be Wiz. Uh, so his name is Martin Anward. Martin Wiz Anward. The Wiz. I mean, he is the Wiz after all, right? Makes sense that he'd, he'd be our research guy. I like the Paradox theme. I should have done that from the beginning. Good way to tie in the Paradox audience, right? Rather than just using random politicians. Well, anyone who shows up in the in the news, any any name recognition is probably good and fun. Right, I'm gonna manually pause it. Wanna check out how we're doing in the overall overall solar system. Survey is at 508 out of 620. So we're nearly there. And what are we waiting on? A couple more military academies. We've already gone up to four. We've had two for a long time. I think five is a good number to settle in on. Getting a couple more research labs would also be nice. Um, yep, 3rd of February of next year. For that mining capacity. Soon we're going to need to do um, the ability to survey regions around us. We're also going to need to start to, to be able to defend ourselves. Let me guess, another conditional order? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's having a hard time. He keeps on chasing comets. Alright, military academies are done. Now we're working on some infrastructure. We're also going to want to get a couple mass drivers. Mass driver is like a you know big mag magnetic railgun, basically. Shoot stuff at stuff. We could build some more research labs as well. I think at some point we're going to want to get five more. Um, double the number that we have. We can easily support them. Again, uh, when we look at our wealth and trade, we're only spending a hundred. And uh, that's that's per month. Yeah, let's look at it on an annual basis. We spend a thousand. So if we doubled it, we could easily afford that. Easily afford that. We'd actually do a lot more research. Okay, um, hmm. Let's get Martin Anwar to finish that. And then I think it's time to consider focusing on... We're building infrastructure now, so we want to start shipping that to the, to the moon. So, let's zoom in on Earth. All bodies, Earth, Luna. Unfortunately, if I zoom in that far, it'll move too far, and then we'll just be looking at nothing. Okay, so on our planet, we have um, now 400 infrastructure available. And infrastructure can be used if we go to the moon. We create a colony. Let's just say we're, yeah, we're going to colonize the moon. Now when we go here, we can see it on our list. So Luna. It costs 200 infrastructure per million people. So with 400 infrastructure, we could we could actually have 2 million people living on the moon right now. Which would be pretty good. Uh, we need to get them up there. So, we also need to get that infrastructure over there. So we do need to focus on getting that ship designed. The question is... What do we need to make a ship that's going to be good? 
I know how to do this. I've done it before. I'm just trying to decide, like... We do need cargo handling system, I think. Um, let's knock that out. Declan Canali. He's actually our, our most senior ranked officer. That's going to be uh, Johan. Scientist Johan. Let's go ahead and knock that out. That's going to give us the ability to um, unload stuff, right? The The default time to, to load things and unload things from a ship is, uh, I think, 10 days for a freighter. And a uh, the holding thing, or whatever that thing was called, is going to be able to allow us to shrink down. Cargo handling is what it's called. There goes the geo-survey ship. Zoom! It's gone. Construction of infrastructure is now complete. So we've built uh, 2,000 infrastructure. And again, on the moon, each 200 gives us 1 million population. So that means that we can put 10 million people on the moon, which is actually going to be maybe too much. It's going to start causing unrest if they get that many people living up there. So maybe we won't ship, uh, ship 2,000. We'll just ship half of the infrastructure to the moon. And then we'll ship half of it to Mars. That uh, sounds like a pretty good spot to me to start. So, uh, research. Come on, dude. We're, we're okay. We finished our research. Excuse me. Oh, we're looking at the moon, right? We only need 39 more for the cargo handling system. Let's uh, just go to the 22nd of July. We'll go 5D ticks. And what else do we need to be able to design this ship? Let's just go try. Let's go try to design it and see where we get. So we've got the go to class freighter. Um, we need an engine, that's what we need. We need a commercial class engine, so we don't want this to be a military vehicle. So, we've got our cargo handling system. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. That's what I need. I need to build a, um, a commercial shipyard complex. So let's, let's queue up one, and let's bump him up ahead of the research labs, and, uh, these are only gonna take until August. Let's bump up, knock out a commercial shipyard, Commercial shipyards can only build commercial class vehicles, but it's 10 times more efficient to upgrade their slipyard capacity and slip number of slipyards. So they're very cheap to make, but they can't make, make they cannot make military vehicles. So we want a commercial shipyard because we're going to make some really, really big freighters. We don't want to be building big freighters out of our military class shipyard. Okay, so assuming we have the commercial shipyard, we could build a bigger ship, which means we can go build a bigger engine. So let's go design a bigger engine and... Uh, the question is, do we want to wait until we actually have advanced, more advanced tech? Because I could try to knock out the Pebble Beach, sorry, Pebble Bed Reactor Technology. It's a two-part upgrade. First you do this, and then we can have nuclear pulse engines. They'll be more efficient. I think we don't wait. I think we just build it now, because we're, we're already to the point where we can actually start to send the infrastructure over. And I want to get the civilian industry kicking into high gear. So, let's do, um, let's just design an engine now. Engines using nu nuclear thermal engine it needs to be commercial, so got to go down to 0.5. It needs to be at least 25 hull size. I would have really liked to knock out fuel consumption. Hmm. It's a 1500 ton engine. I like round numbers. Like I don't really want it to be 25. At 62.5. Of course, it is cheaper. I'm really not concerned about um, fuel efficiency right now. But, you know what? It is it is a freighter, so let's just make a big engine. But you, we should knock out a couple of these little easy researches, I guess, first. They're just, they're only a thousand points, you know? And a thousand points is not very much. So, we got the cargo handling system. Let's go back to power and propulsion. Let's have um, Neil deGrasse Tyson still. Thomas O'Connor can actually... This is a new guy who, who's spawned. He's pretty good. We want to knock out fuel consumption at uh, five labs. We also want to knock out probably minimum engine power modifier, 0.4. Cue that. And... That'll probably be good enough. 
So that's not going to take very long. I mean, he's knocking out... He can knock that out in one year. I think we can afford to wait one more year. Let's just go 30-day ticks, though, so that it's a little bit quicker. Construction of mass drivers is now complete. So we should be working on our commercial shipyard. Construction of commercial shipyard complex has been completed. And now we are beginning working on research labs. Good. So we have two shipyards. We've got the SpaceX military shipyard. Excuse me. And then the, the new shipyard, which we're going to rename to... Uh, well, it's a commercial shipyard, so... Uh, this is going to be the uh, the BMW shipyard. Because, you know, BMW, they used to make airplanes, and then they made fancy cars. Now they're going to make spaceships, big, huge freighters. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're of, the, of the future. Mod rate. What's mod rate? I think I've actually seen that before. Anyway, it starts off with 10,000 capacity, and we're going to want to upgrade it at least another 10... Probably all the way up to, like, I don't know. Let's actually just set this one to continual capacity expansion. Because we're always going to be wanting to build bigger and bigger commercial vehicles. I don't really think there's any reason to not just leave this one on that. It's going to cost resources. Um, continual expansion is going to cost, well, for example, every 10,000 costs us 120. This would cost us, if we were to try to do 10,000 on the SpaceX, it's 1,200. Much cheaper. Let's do continual. Alright, we've already done fuel consumption. That does not affect our existing tech. I think we had another conditional order. Yep. Down to 11.6%. I think it's it still is trying to chase these damn comets. Yep, I actually still gave it too much range. Or they came into the system and then it, it locked onto them because it could think it thought it could get to them, and then it just chased them all the way out there. Um, it only has 11% of its fuel, but it's going pretty quick. ETA 32 days. It's not bad. And it's out of fuel. Never mind. It can't get all the way home. It's stuck. It's stranded. <laughs> run out of fuel. Alright, well, that's unfortunate. And we have one of our research labs that got complete. So let's uh, accrue or add you to here. We can't control anymore. Neil deGrasse! No! Dude! Let's start working on Terraform tech. No one is any good at it. Well, Martin the Wiz, it's all you, man. Hmm. Well, now we're going to do a rescue mission, I guess. Uh, we could build another ship. Um... How, how far did he get in his overall job of surveying the solar system? Pretty close to all of them. I wish he would stop surveying comets. I could tell him not to. But... No, you're just going to be stranded for a little bit. Let's go to our task group. And uh, we're going to tell you to remove your orders. Remove your conditional and default orders. Just sit there. You know, I don't want to have pop-ups about you. I know you have no fuel. We'll, we'll rescue you when, when we can. Um, it's rather unfortunate, though. You shouldn't have chased comets, you dummy. Donald Trump, what a dummy. Okay, um, pa -pa -pum, we're waiting on research. Okay, 30 data ticks. I know you're almost out of fuel. Are you actually going to give me pop-ups all the time? You, you are. Even though you have no orders. Hmm. Well, we're we're in we're in trouble. I don't want to have to build another ship, but I think I might have to build another ship just to go save it. Well, I guess it is about time for the second ship to be built out of the SpaceX shipyard. GE Discovery 02. Um, yeah. It's going to take us until March of next year. You're just, just going to hang just hang out for, you know, a year. I have to click this button 12 times to get the ship done. We got minimum engine power modifier 0.4% done. 0.4, 0.4, not 0.4%.
All right, so while we're working on saving him, we're going to go design our engine now that we have those cheap researches done. Using nuclear thermal engine, we can go down to 0.4 now instead of just 0.5. Cuts our fuel use in half, which is probably good for a big, huge ship. Big, huge engine. It's a 100 engine power instead of 125. Cost less research as well. Not as powerful, but it's uh, it's gonna be fast enough probably. Um, yeah, I think we I think we want to save the fuel. Cutting the fuel use in half is fine. Although, I mean, do we even really have any kind of shortage whatsoever on fuel? Still hanging steady at 10 million, barely even touching it. We have no no production of it. I don't know. Is there is there a way to see how much fuel you're using on 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 year each year? That's something you can tell me. Maintenance clock five years five months. Yeah, that engine is having trouble. Let's make it efficient. And we'll just call it this thing here. I'm not going to suggest a name here because I just I like engines to be simple in the list. We have five available labs. Power and propulsion. The 100 engine power commercial engine will be led by... Uh, we have five labs available. Let's let's do Thomas O'Connor though, because we're probably gonna have another lab pop out in a second. It is currently 21st of July. We can have that by the roughly the end of August. That's pretty good. Yep, we did end up with an inactive research lab as expected. Only 20 points necessary there. Maybe we can remove a few labs from this. Twenty-fifth, it'll definitely be done. Hey, Wiz, here's some more labs for you. Get to work on that terraforming rate. We need to start terraforming at some point. Okay, uh, let's just advance five days because we know we're going to get the tech. And now we have our commercial engine, so we can go design the actual ship that's going to move stuff between the Earth and the Moon. So the go-to class freighter. It's got the duranium armor. It's got a small cargo hold. We want to get rid of that. I think we're going to use regular size cargo hold. And we're going to throw on some of these commercial nuclear engines. It's only going to move at 175 kilometers a second at that rate. I think we put like 10 of them on there. Big, huge engines. They're going to move fairly decently quick. Here's where we can see the load time. So we need to throw on some... Um, Cargo handling system. That'll take it from 10 days down to 2 days. Another one takes us down to 1 day. Uh, this takes us down to 16.4 hours. So I feel like 2 cargo handling systems is pretty darn good. Cuts it in, down to a tenth. Um, the first one is obviously the most most efficient. Because it cuts it down from 10 to, to, to 2. So for just a tiny, tiny little bit um, of size and weight. A little tiny bit of mercassium. I think two is a good number. So it's 52 tons, can go 962 kilometers a second. It only has a range of 3 billion kilometers, which is just 45 days. Um, 3 billion kilometers. Let's think. What's the purpose of the ship? What's the farthest it's going to be traveling? Uh, probably 10 million kilometers, maybe? Round trip from Earth to... You know, that's probably plenty, actually. And his class is commercial. If we threw another uh, cargo hold on there, we lose a lot of speed. Doubles our load time because we've got double the load. Hmm. 
Can't go nearly as far. I think we'll just stick with one. This is going to be a conscript ship. We're not going to actually put anyone in charge of it because it's not a. Uh, it doesn't need to have a, someone in, in charge. It's the go-to class freighter. It's pretty quick. 52 tons. Let's see if we need to shave off a few engines to to make this thing buildable now. Uh, it's going to take us. We have only 18 ton capacity right now. 18 18,000 tons. So I guess maybe we can't do that many engines, can we? Well, we can do two. Just two engines and get this thing built up pretty quick. Would have been nice to get that commercial shipyard out earlier. So I guess we're going to have to hold off for a little bit. Um, how are we looking on that other ship? 24% complete. A couple more auto turns. There probably is a way to disable the uh, the pauses based on being out of fuel. I've never had this happen before where I'm out of fuel and I only have one ship, so it's kind of annoying that I can't solve it. Okay. The discovery has been built. Okay, so let's go do a quick rescue mission. We'll grab our shipyard task group. We're going to grab the Discovery 02. We're going to detach him from his current thing. It's going to be the uh, yeah. This one we're gonna we're gonna rename this to the uh, Grav Survey. Even though that's not the name of the ship, that's not what that does just yet. Um, we're not going to give it any conditional orders or anything. It's got 150,000 units of fuel. Uh, we're going to tell it to go to another task group, the Geosurvey task group, move to, and then we'll go five days. It almost got out there in five days. It has arrived, and now what we can do is we can either merge them into a singular task group and then have them share their fuel, or we can go into the actual ship itself using the individual ships list, I think, F6. We can go to miscellaneous. So we're looking at the GE Discovery 02 miscellaneous and then manual fuel transfer to the, the 001. Let's, um, other ships fuels at one. Let's transfer, you know, how much do we have? We're looking for our cargo, not cargo. Uh, Oh, it's up here. 144,000. So we go to miscellaneous. Let's give it like, you know, 50,000 units. Transfer 2. So now that it has 50,000 units of fuel, we lost 50,000. And uh, let's just tell task group 2, the grav survey, to return to Earth. And then hang out there. And uh, geo survey task group, you know might want, I mean, there's still more stuff to survey in the solar system. Not much, but there's stuff, you know? Let's just hold off on it, though. There's, we've already surveyed plenty. Let's grab him and tell him to go home, too. So we're going to rescind your conditional and default orders. We're just going to tell you to go to Earth. And they need some, you know, some much-needed shore leave. And now we should be able to do 30-day uh, ticks again. They've both made it home safe and sound. And uh, they've completed shore leave and they're fully rested. Well, they barely had any trip at all. And we've finished our 10th research lab. Let's take a look at our wealth and economy here. Yeah, we could easily afford a lot more research labs. But, we're going to have to take a break here and uh, we'll work on that in the next episode. So, let's see. We're working on terraforming rate right now. We're still trying to advance the size of our shipyard. It's up to 30,000 now. The ship that I was looking at building and using, the go-to class, 
I really don't want it to be so slow. I feel like 318 kilometers a second is really slow. I'd rather probably just wait a little bit longer. Yeah. I mean, we're expanding that shipyard really fast. This is a commercial class shipyard. I think I'd just like some more of these engines on here. So the engines are not even that big. No, let's not wait. Let, let, let's get started on it. What, what can we do? Three engines. Two engines is pretty slow, but we're just going back and forth between here and the moon. 28.8. 30, 40, 30,436. We'll go with two. Two engines. Lock it. That's the go-to class. Done. Let's repurpose our shipyard. The BMW shipyard. It's going to be assigned... Excuse me? Did I do something to turn it into a, uh, a non a non commercial ship? The go-to class freighter. Is it because it's too large? That's probably why. 3130-31350. And I know that uh, we did not specify the deployment time, but that's because it is a it's it's a commercial vehicle. You don't even have to worry about that. Um, that must be why, right? So let's just advance 30 days. Oh, and we need to tell our industry what to do. Well, more research labs would be good. Um, I think just knocking out more research labs will really speed things up. Also, we're doing fine on stock. We've got plenty of stockpile stuff for now. We do want more infrastructure. We want more mass drivers. Maybe more military academies. Um, but for now, I think, like, just knocking out another... 20 research labs would be totally fine. So, advance 30 days. And let's see if now the shipyard's large enough. 31720. Huh. Oh, that's SpaceX. Yeah, now, now it's available. I'm pretty sure I wasn't selecting SpaceX before. I think it's because it wasn't large enough. So, okay. The FT Go 2 is now available. Um, let's go ahead and build one. It will be complete in January of 31. So just a few short months. It's actually a very cheap ship to build. Um, and then we can start shipping some infrastructure around, and then the civilian thing will get going. And again, this is the last episode I'm going to record before the next session. So I'm going to only record one per day. Leave your comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Um, let me know how you think that the, uh, you know, the future of humanity is going. And I'll look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.